Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Trinity Stamps. Today we are going to be using the Hey Diddle Diddle stamp set, um, the Embossed Edges, Hills and Slopes, and then the Rainbow uh, Die. We're using just the cloud part. Um, so I showed you like the little gnome nappers and the other one was no gnome ones more adorable because um, I had a completely different scene in my head uh, than what I could fit on my card. Don't you hate when that happens? So I already am switching over to a slimline card. My card is eight and a half by three and three quarters. Um, the original idea was to have kind of the nursery rhyme up in the clouds at the top of the car and these little napping gnomes down below. And uh, there's just not, there was just not enough room. So we're just going to be doing the nursery rhyme portion. And I did color the, the gnomes. So sometime later this month, I'll put those up because they are very, very cute. I'm just going to have to use them on another card. That's all. So since my card is a night scene... I'm putting down my grasses. I am going to have to change this <laughs> to um, to make room, like to, to change the way that we're, we're doing the card. Um, but I wanted to show you nonetheless, just in case you are a person who was like, I just want to make a one layer card. Um, maybe I'm the only person like that. Who knows? Um, but I end up using stamps and dies to create my scene, which can give your cards kind of a lot of dimension, you know, make them a little bit more fun and more interesting. Um, so you can do you can do these cards either way. But the ink blending um, does go on a bit darker, like for the grasses when you're doing a, a night scene, um, which I had to do in order to use the moon, right? The cow jumps over the moon. You get what I'm saying. Um, so I did the grasses and I went out to my darkest green, which is Rustic Wilderness. For the sky, I'm going to take it from Salty Ocean and you can see like the lightest part I'm leaving is where my moon is going to sit. And just to be transparent with you guys, at the end of the day, I don't think it really mattered to leave that. I think I could have just done the whole thing like as a gradient and not left that area, but when I first started doing it, I had no idea that I was going <laughs> that I was going to basically be completely covering it up. So the last step is for all of the areas, for the grass and the sky, I am adding some black soot. This is just going to help everything, you know, be a little bit darker around the edges um, since it is a scene that's happening at night. Uh, I just like to add that little bit in because I do have a tendency to work with brighter colors. And so adding that little bit of black in does kind of knock them back. So now I've sped this up. I do all of my ink blending twice for the most part, especially like when it's really large areas like this. Some line cards are not small, so I have a lot of real estate to cover. And you guys already know that my blending buddies are my favorite because they put down a lot of ink and just make my job much easier. So taking that back in to the lightest color, which is Salty Ocean, and then leaving just a little bit of a halo again, this is where I thought my moon was going to go. I mean, my moon still does go there. You just can't see any of that. In order to create my Starry Night, I am doing a couple of things. The first one I'm starting with, because I'm using Distress Ink and it's reactive with water, I am just using um, just clear water that will give me some bleach spots that will look like very far away stars. I'm using this like shimmer spatter, um, but you can use Perfect Pearls would work here, uh, mixed with a little bit of water, um, just to create some shiny, like, what is the word that I want? Like, they're not glittery. They're, what are they? I guess they, they're shimmery. They're shimmery stars, guys. That's that's the best way I can describe it. And then for some more like bright white ones, I am using some Copic White Opaque Ink. And like I said, it's just going to create a lot of dimension in the background. So moving on to our stamping, um, I am stamping in an ink that is safe for alcohol markers because that is, I'm going to be coloring these with my Copics. Um, and you'll see these little gnomes in here because um, originally I thought I was going to use them. But anyhow, so here is a funny, you guys tell me and you, you ask yourselves, you'll know, be truthful with yourselves. Do you know this whole nursery rhyme? 
Do you know the whole thing? Because here's what I learned. I did not. <laughs> Even though I have two kids, um, like the first beginning part, like the hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, solid, know it. I also know that it ends in the dish ran away with the spoon. So can I tell you that when I got this stamp set and there was a laughing dog in it, I was like, what? What's he doing there? What's he for? Um, so <laughs> just me, because I asked my girlfriend, um, who whose kids are much older, by the way, like her kids are in their um, like early 20s. Um, and she knew it right off the rip. Like she just went straight through it, knew the whole thing. And I was like, I'm very impressive. Very, very impressive. Um, and I have a theory as to why I don't know it, but I'm going to share it with you. So the whole little nursery rhyme, you know, like mother goose nursery rhyme is, Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sight and the dish ran away with the spoon. Now that one line that I did not know, the little dog laughed changes based on where you're looking up the words. So sometimes it's he laughed to see such fun. Sometimes it's he laughed to see such a sport. And some um, sometimes it's he laughed to see such a sight. So I think that's why it didn't stick with me is because it's like... It's like a variable in the in the nursery rhyme. So I'd be very interested. Leave me a comment and let me know if you did know it, which version did you know? So let's move on to the coloring. So here, um, I don't want my moon to have no color, but it's I want it to be very soft. So I am going in with some warm grays. And the reason I chose warm grays is because I'm going to put a little bit of yellow over it. Yellow is a warm color, and so the warm grays will work nicer with that. So I added a lot more yellow on the left-hand side, and originally I was just going to try to blend it out into white. That's why you see me using the colorless blender, just kind of lightening up that inside edge. I didn't actually end up liking that, so I did go in with a very, very pale yellow. It's a Y quadruple zero, and then I filled it in with that, and even though it almost looks white, it looks better. So I did that. And then we're going to use a lot of cool grays to color in our little cow. Now, obviously, you can make your cow whatever color you would like. I chose to go with a black and white cow. And you'll notice that I'm being a little bit heavy-handed with my cool grays in the white areas. I find it much easier to just go in and color the whole thing white than have to try to color around the little spots. So that is why you see me just adding the shading for the grays everywhere. And then once I get out to my darkest color, I'll, I'll go back in and, and do the black portion. You do wanna do the white portion before the black because once the black goes down, that dark color goes down, if you try to go in there with like a C1, um, you risk smudging that dark color into your white areas. So try to do the white first. Now, I went all the way, I went C1, C3, C5, and the reason that I'm being so heavy-handed is, again, because it is a night scene. So that does change our shading just a little bit. We still want it to appear white, and it will once we get it among some other colors. But um, it is darker, so he needs to be shaded a little bit darker. So for the black portion, I started with a C5. I filled in his little spots, his little tufty tail there, and his back hooves. Uh, don't worry, I'll remember that he has front hooves uh, before the card is over. Like, I just, I don't know. I was I was in zoned in into what I was doing and totally missed those little, I can keep on to call them paws, those front paws. So each time I'm going a little bit darker, but I am leaving a lighter edge. So the like the black, we're going to go all the way out to like black, black, black 100. But especially around his eye, I'm leaving that eye or that section lighter. Like the darkest portion will be on the outside of the circle, not where his eye is, because I don't want to lose the, um, the structure of his eyeball by coloring it all in black. I want you to be able to still see that he has two eyes. 
for the one dot that is, or the one spot that's like behind his ear, obviously that portion that's tucked up under his ear will have darker shading. For his back hooves, um, the one that is like more toward us, uh, I will leave a lighter edge on the very tip top to make a separation between the two hooves. And then for his tail, I left, you know, just a little bit, a little bit lighter where it would be less compact. The hair would be less compact. And then for the front, I just kind of came up from the bottom just like I did with the um, the white shading. And that's, again, just going to leave a little bit of a highlight on the top edges um, just to give it a little bit of dimension. I had to look up what color black and white bull's horns were because uh, I did not know. Turns out they're like uh, beige or a light brown. And um, so I shaded those with the warm grays as well. And then I'm going to go back in here and blend out the rest of my white. I got super excited when I got to that C5. And so I didn't finish blending um, out my white with the C3 and the C1. I know he looks really dark now, but once we get him on the card, um, he won't look quite that dark. I'm going to use those same cool grays to color in my dishes. These are super fun, like your dish and your spoon. You could do, um, you know, like really fun colors. I stuck with the neutrals just because I all the other animals were going to be neutral. So I chose to just stay kind of on that theme. And then I'm going to be honest with you guys. Normally, I try to pay attention to my light source, um, but I wasn't. 100% positive. Remember, I told you I changed the card design. So it wasn't 100% positive where all of my little guys were going to go. So in this case, I don't really have a light source. Uh, and I still think the card is cute. So even if you're somebody who is like new to um, coloring and you're just learning and you see all of these like creators like myself and, and other Copic um, colorists, or Olo, or whatever, any kind of alcohol markers, but not even alcohol markers, I guess it still applies for colored pencils or watercolor. Um, but anyway, if you see them using a light source, it, that's not something you have to do. That is something you can work up to. If you don't use your light source, your card will still be cute. Um, so for the, my little laughing doggy, um, he also has spots. So I did his little tail and the spot over his eye and his ear um, a little bit lighter, and I did the rest of him brown. That's also going to match the browns that are in my uh, my little fiddler, my cat fiddler. And when you have a scene like this where we have a couple of different things going on, you do want to try to repeat your colors so that way they're, the scene feels very cohesive. Um so I did add, you know, just a little bit of shading with that warm gray. Again, I'm I'm repeating those same colors. When I did this, I realized that I forgot to shade, like his eyes are squinted shut, um, the little doggies. So I did forget to add some shading to the brown. So I'm going to come back and do that. And then there's shading where his ears are sitting on top of his head. His belly will be very dark because he's kind of clutching his, you know, his belly in that... Um, you know, big kind of rolling laughter he's got going on. So these ones are very cute, very easy to color. So, um, you know, maybe something to to think about if you're, you know, just beginning looking at your images. Trinity has a lot of really good ones um, that are just like cute and simple, and they're a really good place to start. Now, obviously, if you're a more experienced colorist, um, they're still very cute and easy, you know, to to use, and you can add as much definition or dimension as you would like. Moving on to my little cat. Again, I told you I am repeating those same browns that you see in my dog. Um, I'm adding some of the darkest shading where her ears are. I don't know why I said her. She looks like a her to me. I'm going to say it's a her fiddler. Um so where her ears are sitting on top of her head, kind of around the side of her face, definitely on her arms because that fiddle is sitting in her arms. That would be casting a shadow. Her tail behind her little tushy, that side of her body is where I decided to add the shading um, because this one I did 
generally know was going to be like the she's the first part of the song you know the the sentiment of the hey diddle diddle cat in the fiddle um so that's like that's where we're starting and so i knew that she was going to be facing left like that's how she stamped and that that's where the moon was going to be coming from so i did generally kind of keep that in mind when i was adding her shading but i'm going to be honest she's about the only one <laughs> she's about the only one i paid attention to it for and it's fine it's fine so in order to, again, just keep repeating those same colors, I chose to do her little stripes in a warm gray. Um, and then throughout, like their ears, the little dog's mouth, the little cat's um, ears, like I, when I'm adding the pinks in, I'm using those same R colors. Uh, just repeating those colors just helps bring everything together and helps you to be more successful with your card making. For the fiddle, I use the same browns, but in order to help it um, differentiate between her body, I only used the two darkest colors. Uh, I didn't felt, I did not feel like I needed a lot of colors in there. So now that the coloring is done, I'm going to go ahead and die cut these, and then we're going to figure out the building. I owe a, this is, this is just me being honest and transparent. Like I sometimes struggle with baby cards um, because these are kind of the things that you only need every once in a while. And, but I was thinking about it, like, as I was making it and trying to figure out what sentiment I was going to put on, I was like, well, you know, baby showers, everybody has baby showers, right? Like within your family or your friends. But then I was like, well, this would be really cute for like a first or a second birthday as well. Um, so I kind of struggled with whether or not to do it as a birthday card or a congratulations card. And I chose to go with the congratulations card because honestly, whenever I get invited to a baby shower, I always forget that I need a card. Like I go, like they just make it so easy with like the registrations and stuff, um, to like just do your shopping uh, and, you know, check mark your little list. And then even like I had one, it's more popular now, I think. We had a friend of ours that just did an online shower. Like, they didn't even host a shower. You just went online to their registry and had a gift sent directly to their house. Um, so, like, in that case, I would like to send them a card when their baby is born because, obviously, I didn't send them a card at their shower. Um, so that's probably where this one will go, honestly. They're due in June. Um, so here, what I did was I cut that edge using the um, embossed edges, hills, and slopes. And then I just redid the same inking. And that is so I could pop it up. Originally, when I cut the clouds, I was cutting them into steps because I thought that I would have like one character on each step. And I ended up not really loving that. So I'm going to create one large cloud that's going to go across the front. And to do that, I'm just going to cut one side of my cloud and then I'm going to flip the die upside down and cut the bottom edge of my cloud. There's also, again, if you're a person who's like, I like one layer cards, uh, Trinity has a great um, stencil as well. In order to create some interest in the clouds, I am going to add a little bit of shading. Now, these blending buddies are great and they pick up tons of color. So in order for it to be soft, I don't even need to re-ink these. I'm just going to use the ink that's left over on them. And that die cut that I used to, um, like the leftover, the negative piece that I used to do the cloud, I'm going to use that as a mask to just add some another layer of clouds in here. Yes, they are going to be a little bit darker. I'm just going to add some shading to the top to kind of blend them in. I'm going to have characters over top of them, so I'm not overly worried about the shading. I just didn't want it to be stark white. So now that we have all the imagery done, I'm going to go ahead and do my sentiments. I could absolutely just stamp these down and heat emboss them directly on the card. But because I have all of the kind of like stars in the sky, I wanted to heat emboss them on a separate piece and then cut them out with their coordinating die just so I didn't have anything that would make it illegible. And because I think things should be matchy-matchy, um, I chose to then do the same thing for the bottom. I am going to, I, I treat with my anti-static tool, stamp them in some white pigment ink, and now I'm going to heat emboss them with some white detail embossing powder. 
and then I will die cut them. Once they're die cut, I am going to then color them with the same distress inks that I used for the background so that they will match. Um, and I can just insert them right into the scene with really no issues at all. So yeah, um, what else? We have, we, May is just, I think I told you guys this recently, May is just such a busy month for us. We have my son's birthday party coming up this weekend, and then it's his end of the school. So we also have field day coming. Um, in his science class, they're setting off rockets. We have this, this, that, you know, they're doing like a family picnic for it. We have a bowling party this weekend. Um, it, it's just, there's just so much happening in May. And then, you know, we typically host for my family now. But we always used to be at my mom's house, um, but it's hard on her. So we ended up kind of taking over hosting. Back to the card. Um, so I just used a very, uh, sl just slightly damp cloth just to buff over the top of that so that I didn't have the ink sitting on my embossing. For the clouds, I'm going to adhere them flat. I'm also going to adhere the fiddler flat to the cloud, but the cow and the moon, as well as the um, laughing dog and the hill at the bottom are all going to be popped up. So when you choose to use like die cuts in your... Um, in your scene building, it really does give you a way to kind of play with the dimension, which is extra fun. Also, I did the stars are, they have stamps um, as well as dies. I chose to just cut the dies out of white, and then that's what I used to kind of accent the clouds and our characters. Um, what were we talking about? Like, hmm, I think we were talking about our schedule. But did I have a point? Who knows? I don't know. It's wild around here. Um, oh, I was saying, like, we've taken up hosting. So we hosted Mother's Day. Then we have Peanut's birthday. Then we'll host Memorial Day. Um, and then we do have some uh, traveling coming up as well. Um, so it's just, it's a busy next couple of weeks. But um, we get to see a lot of our family. And so... Like, no complaints about that. I love being able to to spend time um, with my sisters and my mom, uh, my in-laws, my um, brother-in-law and his wife were doing, like, some traveling uh, for work. Like, they did the – she was a traveling nurse, and since he works from home, he could pretty much work wherever. So for, like, the last year or so, they've been just kind of traveling around, and they finally um, moved back home. So it's nice to have them uh, at functions again and be able to see them. Peanut's always super excited because they're more athletic, a lot more athletic than uh, this mother right here. And so they'll get out there and, um, you know, play basketball with them or play football with them. And so he's always excited to, to see see them. For the little dog, just something to know, because the um, hill is popped up on foam, in order for him to hit on, hit, sit on the hill uh, flush, I did have to put a little foam behind his head. And then um, I glued my cow to my moon before putting on my foam tape. And then from here, you guys know if you watch my videos that I don't love a white outline on my dies, especially not in a scene. Um, I just feel like it makes it look very disjointed. So once I get all of my little characters glued down, I will be coloring in the outline in order to make them look more part of the scene. So I'm going to start with the little shadow underneath my dish and my spoon. It is obviously a night card, but we do have a, a moon shining, so there would be a little bit of shadow underneath them. And then I'm going to just match those greens all the way up, coloring in that outline. Um, so when you look at it, you the outline doesn't stick out kind of like a sore thumb. But I will do that all the way up. So I will choose, you know, some blues to go around the head of the dog and underneath of the moon and the cow uh, on top of the um, little kitty cat fiddler. And then um, 
where she is standing in the clouds. Like, I don't want her to just be floating, even though it's clouds, right? I don't want her to just be floating up there without any sort of grounding. So I am going to add a little bit of shading underneath her feet as well. Uh, but I forgot about it until I started with my shimmer pen. And then I was like, hey, 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 she's floating here. So I just chose some of the same blues that I saw in the background that I created with the ink blending, just some similar ones more on the pale side, and they were a little bright. I think I used a B45 and a B21, like they were just a little bright. So in order to knock that back, I'm going to go over it with the C1 just to add a little bit more gray into it and have it be a little less saturated. Um, and then if it's not blending super well, you can always hit it with a colorless blender around the edges that'll help kind of blend it out to white. Then I'm going to add shimmer to my stars, to my moon, um, and to my dishes. I did go in with a white gel pen and add some highlights to my characters, but I also added some more um, like larger stars kind of around the die cut stars just so that they would have a little bit more weight. And then that's it. That's the whole card. So I hope that this inspires you guys to kind of incorporate your dies into your scene building. I think it's super cute. Uh, I always appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.